I'm Ferenc Pongrácz representing IBM and I'm going to be very brief. Innotech is a Hungarian innovative software company and they are going to give a presentation. I'm going to play a game. I have done this before, so sorry if you are a bit bored. But I'm going to ask you to stand up, please. We are going to make an experiment, especially. Uh, I'm really sorry if you are bored with this. So I'm going to count to three and I will clap my hands. Thank you, you can sit down. I only wanted to demonstrate what's hap what happened. I actually uh, clapped my hands after two, and many people clapped after two. So what, what has happened, uh, people do what they can see and not what they are told. And this is what we would like to show you and demonstrate, that there are a lot of values here in Kurseg. We know that it has a very valuable past, great history, but if we talk about it, it's not the same as taking action. And also, if we only have plans, it's a little bit less than actually showing what you can do, what sort of action you can take. I had the opportunity to talk to Mr. Mayor, but we hope that it's going to be a place where we show uh, what a lovely place it is. It's not just talk, it's action. This is what we are going to demonstrate now. We are going to show you what our plans are. Uh, allow me to make two more remarks that you can see uh, on the posters here. Technology does not have self-interest. It would like to serve public interest. And the other one, the craft, the, uh, the corporation of cities and representing culture and science, together we will be able to find the answer. And IT is only a means to the end, to achieve this end, and to become crafted, uh, as we usually tend to say, uh, because of this corporation entitled Craft. My colleagues will, will tell you and show you how it's possible. I'm Monika Mátai, one of the colleagues and associates uh, of this institute, and I have been given the honor to demonstrate a project that this institute is carrying on with my colle colleagues, and the title is Talking Houses. In the background of this uh, idea is Elemir Hankish. When I was first here as a student with a scholarship, and I was a student of sociology, still well, knowing his ideas and concepts from the university, I started my work and I realized you can create until you see yourself complete and you can look at yourself as part of your own creation. This was an idea that I wanted to follow myself and I thought that we should look at past as something which is not complete, which is not closed down. And when I came to Kursak for the first time, I was touched by the beauty of the town. I'm sure that you feel the same way. And another idea was a phrase that Elamir invented was the walking winter coat. And he meant that you shouldn't only see the, the winter coats, the, the skirts which are worn by people, but the fates of the people, the lives of the people who are wearing these clothes. And I actually uh, transferred this idea to houses, and I thought, why don't we ask questions from these houses, because they have history, they have uh, stories which we don't know about. And if we only walk in the city, uh, we can only see the facades, and that's all. We can see the front, and we don't know anything what happened behind the walls. Uh, I'm happy to hear that it, uh, the word gossip came to your mind when talking about us, but we are going to talk about human lives, human fate. Another idea which was invented or actually traced by Elamir Hankish, which was um, um, a story of uh, the Emperor Franz Josef of the Habsburg Empire. Uh, 
um, he wanted to say in a speech, Hungary has not been what it will be, but uh, by mistake he said Hungary has not been and has never been, uh, and is, is not there or something like that. So he made a mistake and it was a kind of funny thing, but still I think it again reminds us that we should take action and the emperor actually did uh, a, a good job to remind us. I chose this picture because I had the opportunity to see the Berlin Wall when I was young. And you remember that you take a look into a hole, maybe it's not there, but you want to see the reality behind the wall. Usually, well, if you come to think of it, in, in Berlin, it was the East Berlin, the city of East Berlin, what you could see behind the wall, but sometimes you don't see, you can only imagine what's on the other side of the wall. And I would like to quote uh, a famous historian, Robert Danton, who um, writes in the introduction of a study volume, and we should look at past as an anthropologist would do, because we can only, uh, by putting ourselves in the center of the story, can we learn about their culture. And for us historians and my colleagues, this was the challenge to get to know the people, get to know the lives of the city, uh, and that was the main point. We are already members of a different society, a new society, but physically it's the same space, it's the same town, we are surrounded by uh, the same uh, walls and, and houses, but the, these places have a different message now and different atmosphere. What we can see, what we wanted to um, discover was not something fictitious but something real that these people uh, underwent and, and uh, witnessed. So what we would like to uh, explore here is not only individual stories, it's a kind of legacy or heritage and I'm not going to read all the points. What we are thinking about, what we would like to explore is the kind of structural uh, uh, network. We have Zoltan Mijay in, uh, in the room, who is a very important person. Mr. Peter Bokany, Imre Shöptei. These people have been of great help. We have Henriette Radler also involved, Polash Fusfa standing in the doorway, and, and other people. So the major challenge for us to play on different strings, not on one string, uh, to make an instrument of legacy, uh, cultural legacy of Kursak. We would like to put Kursak back on the map, both in terms of microstructure and in terms of mm, macro, ma macro and microstructure. Now, how is Kursak part of uh, Central Europe? Uh, to what extent does it have a Central European identity? I think very much. We need to demonstrate that for people living in the 21st century. Now, this is uh, only the story of four buildings, but it has the thickness of a doctoral dissertation. It's almost 500 pages. And it's the documentation of four different buildings, including the pictures, the texts, um, and whatever we could find in the archives. I'm a little bit worried that, uh, apart from the professor, not many people will read it. But we would like to uh, show this uh, uh, um, research in a different way, uh, because not many people uh, want to read this, perhaps. So there are three levels. One will be a room, a room of theory. So anybody interested in research and would like to uh, study the environment, you will be able to sit down here and find a kind of a spiritual place to do some work. Uh, um, and for the future generation, there will be a, a place for the children. I know that there are very few kids who are happy uh, when reading. They don't want to read anymore. They are looking for different contents. And for them, there will be a special kind of uh, application. At the bottom, it's not a picture of Kursag. It's the Great Fire of London. 
And the reason why we put it there is because Robert Dunton has a study in which we need to imagine how the French peasant lived in the 18th century. It was a kind of a terrible uh, situation, a terrible environment. They, they had disasters, one coming after the other. And in the 18th century, there were huge uh, fires. Uh, and, and in Kursag, it happened several times. Uh, there was such a great fire in the town hall that it was impossible to move back in, uh, uh, or even after years. So can you just try to imagine that now we are complaining and we have no toilet paper at Tesco's, uh, the spar uh, shop closes on Sundays. So what kind of problems did these people in the past have to experience? If there was no fire, there was a um, plague, there was an army looting the city, uh, there were all kinds of catastrophes and disasters, horrible things that sort of they could just not, you know, follow their everyday uh, uh, life. So that was the Middle Ages about. And when we try to reconstruct the past, this is something we must keep in mind. Up until the 18th uh, or 19th century, you could not do any peaceful work here, and not in other cities either. We uh, made interviews with experts, and I thought it was a, a valuable work that we did. We uh, asked credible people, aut aut authentic uh, experts, and so that's part of the work. Kursag in space, we actually looked at uh, its geographical location. It could be further developed. We just put down a few other pieces of data that gives you and puts you in perspective. We actually calculated how much time a pigeon needs to cover uh, certain distances, for instance, how much time does it need to get to Vienna to take uh, a letter, for instance. And it's the natives of Kursag in the space this is already another development, IT development, and I'm going to ask my colleagues to show it uh, in the virtual space. So who are the people who were natives of Kursag, either were born here or worked here, and, and where they ended up for different reasons? We will not have the time to go one by one, but there are different reasons. Uh, Istvan Czernel, who was an ornithologist and uh, bird specialist, he made research activities in Norway, but uh, Arthur Lynx, for instance, who was uh, escaping the potential and imminent Holocaust, uh, he actually escaped to New York, and, um, and there was a football player who was a member of the Golden football team, and he managed to uh, go abroad, but there was a missionary, Janusz Suhai, who went to um, South America, and George Vukan, a famous pianist, gave concerts in the USA. And Philip Shea, he was in the fifth of the list, uh, went to Vienna and he was uh, a diplomat, basically. So these people were very strongly related to um, the town. And Andras Hodik was also born here, and for a few days he actually occupied the town. There was a kind of a coup and Maria Theresa was very happy about it, unlike the Prussian ruler. So this is how we would like to show uh, Kursag is in the center and have where famous natives of Kursag ended up. It's just um, starting point. I'm sure we can further develop uh, this this map. Um, actually, the research activity started a long time ago, but our cooperation with Innotech, this IT company, uh, started a few weeks ago only, so there is still a long way to go. And these are the visitors. Obviously, there are uh, a lot of other people, but we have Gabor Betlan, uh, a reigning prince uh, uh, in the 17th century. But there are many other famous people. We have funny stories like Miklos Zrinyi, 
in the 17th century who was not given accommodation and he was turned away and there was a bit of a, a debate because then, well, obviously he raised his concerns about it. And uh, Franz Josef, the previously mentioned emperor who came he here on a military exercise and uh, visited the town. There are some very nice stories. And we have two musicians, Franz Liszt and Sultan Kodai, uh, who gave a co concert uh, in the town. We are also uh, scanning uh, WordPress. First, we, lo we are looking at the, the English speaking, or sorry, the English press uh, media or, or newspapers, journals. Um, in the United States, uh, they are. Um, Libraries managed to digitalize uh, over 5,000 journals and newspapers, and I'm trying to, you know, keep track of this and try to find and locate mentions of Cursor. And the, the Times, the New York Times, uh, sorry, the British Times actually uh, made a story about the, this uh, imperial visit back in 1893, and the other one was. Uh, uh, and during the Second World War, where Kursek was mentioned several times, quoting, uh, uh, making it an example of a town which actually survived the Second World War and several attacks. Uh, we refer to this as Guinness Records. There are some achievements that we are very proud of, and it's only a taste of the achievements. Last week, we uh, had an interview and I had the opportunity to take a very valuable book and volume in my hands which is entitled The Book of the Coming of the Grape. Uh, you may not know but uh, it, uh, the, um, the winemakers of the city started to register uh, the first uh, vine that comes out in the spring and since then, every winemaker uh, actually puts a, a drawing of the of the, the the young vine into this book, and this is how it, it has been an ongoing tradition. Imre Feshtetich account. Uh, he actually uh, discovered uh, a, a lot of. Uh, uh, he was a doctor and, and disco uh, discovered and invented a lot of uh, uh, processes and procedures. Uh, and also a, a kind of a um, inoculation against um, a smallpox was also where it was invented in the 18th century. And István Csernel, who brought skiing into Hungary, he was the first uh, writer of, uh, of, of a book on skiing. He referred to it as foot slaying and there is a little film about it and in the other picture you can see the uh, Istvan Chernel himself and he actually set up a company producing skis and now here is a video uh, filmed by Henny, the lady standing next to me we reconstructed a story of a tourist arriving in Kursag a hundred years ago so let's imagine that you're a tourist you arrived in Kursag a hundred years ago and what did you see? We made a little film of it. We uh, identified a few spots on the map. Let's suppose that you arrived in the middle of the summer. Uh, you arrived by train. You went to the Strutz, the Ostrich Hotel, which is one of the oldest uh, hotels, not only in Kursag, but also in Hungary. You looked at the menu. You moved into your room, you can see the inside of the hotel room, you went to see the plague column, you visited the Jesus' Heart Church, a Catholic church, you saw the interior, you visited the Eurystice Square, which is the old medieval main square of the town, and then you sent a picture postcard. There are lots of such postcards held or kept in the archives. Um, and you can see how uh, what sort of Pope Scots people wrote back then. And of course, you came here uh, as, uh, as a tourist to Channel Street. This is where we are right now. You had a nice lunch. You went to a cafe or a restaurant. This was one of the opportunities or the possibilities where you could go to an elite restaurant. Or you may have visited 
a little grocery uh, of the Roth brothers or maybe went to the pharmacy and then you went back to the railway station with your family perhaps took a carriage and then left the town so it's a kind of a game to raise interest in the town um, to encourage people to visit but we are actually planning to to make new films for instance uh, going back to the 16th century how Miklos Juric is the captain of the the, the, the the castle so we started this new work first we define the content together with the Institute of Advanced Studies and these are the first uh, results with some new technologies involved which are considered to be state-of-the-art and which is an experience-based uh, kind of uh, content. And these, we, we, we look at these as kind of bridges to, to attach the tourist content, which might will bring us to, to other, uh, other values and other ideas. And we would like to make it as a unique package. So we are on the scene and we would like to give information uh, about certain venues. It could be internal or external venues, outdoor, indoor venues. Um, we have a flip chart uh, hidden on, uh, and there are some pictures on it. And now on the application, when uh, the picture, I mean the, the machine recognizes Channel House, then they get all kinds of uh, related information, stories, what happened the more within the walls of these houses in Channel Street. Uh, you will not be able to see all these things if you just simply walk in front of the building in the street. Uh, there, is, uh, uh, there are some stories mu of music, and if you want to get a, an atmosphere, you can hear the music which was produced and played here among the walls of this particular house. There are some audio contents. This could be just ordinary traditional audio guides, but we can seg segment the material to please specific target groups, maybe suitable for kids, suitable for scientists, or a thematic grouping. And we have a uh, back then and today, so we can actually show how the place looked like and how it looks now. So you can always check what a particular building looked lo looked like uh, back then. If we want to take the tourists back, what the place may have looked like in uh, in the the at uh, the beginning of the century we can actually offer a map of the time and the next venue is a fountain or a well on in the middle of the main square you can see the original well and if the application recognizes this picture uh, it starts, the music starts. Now, Zoltan Mije is going to say something about this. Uh, I was walking in the center of the city and I was looking at the geometrical forms of uh, the facades and I translated all this into music. Being a musician, I translated it into melodies, rhythms, And I composed music for the well, and I act this is like an in interactive solfeggio music theory class. So if you walk in the city of Kursag, you can see the, the, the circles and the lines at the top of the building, and you can actually check what kind of music it has, and each part has a certain melody attached to it. And 
and then maybe you can start thinking what sort of music you could have composed while Mr. Mijay did it his way, but perhaps you could do something different. And then you can hear the whole of the music when you stand in front of the item or the object itself. I actually compose music for several other buildings based on the geometry of, of the construction. Um, and if we talk about the extended reality, let's suppose we have a traditional book or brochure, you can actually attach further contents. Let's suppose that you have the brochure in, in your hand, and when you're standing in front of the Yurishich Castle, you can uh, look at this application and you can have a three-dimensional aspect. And this could uh, bring further ideas into the picture. And if we move further to look at the internal construction and this um, room of silence, which could be a, an exhibition room, we have some touch screens and other digital screens or, or tables where you, we can actually in, in, install other uh, applications. Here you can see a three-layered map. You can see a satellite, you can see the street view, and the 19th century uh, photo uh, from the land register. And you can compare the 19th century map with the modern street view or street map. And we took uh, uh, pictures of different famous buildings and then obviously we can upload uh, lots of information about this and you can actually check this on site or you can check this beforehand to prepare for your visit and you can always see then and now back then and now this is the hero's gate and we also offer 3d uh, models or pictures and it's just the first steps. Uh, I think we can we can add a lot of other buildings from this from the city of Kursa. And if you want to uh, keep going, we can actually look at the connections. It's like a mind map, a kind of network. If you enter, my colleague just picked the famous buildings and then we are in the Sigray house and you can see that these connections actually get unfolded and then you can see the related pictures which I can actually look at maybe I can browse through all the photos and via these connections we can actually find the uh, a direct uh, um, access to the people and to the history or the stories of the people behind. Allow me to give you a, an insight into something very interesting. This is a kind of application where you can get dressed in. Uh, we'll show you what. We can have a virtual mirror which is a screen and in this mirror, uh, virtual reality, and this is how you can see. So this is the virtual mirror, and now my colleague is holding the marker in her hand, and now she can actually get dressed in an old time uh, clothes, and then you can take a photo, and she can I either uh, upload it on <laughs> Facebook, it's already up on the FB. <laughs> and I'm improvising this music for the pictures. <laughs>